This web video on accessing local data is part of the Community Economic Development Data Series. In this video, we describe how to access Census and American Community Survey data using American Fact Finder. The video updates an August 2011 video with information about Fact Finder as it was revised in January of 2013. So what information is available on American Fact Finder? Fact Finder includes information from various data sets, including the Census, the American Community Survey, population estimates, and the economic census, business patterns, non-employer statistics, and annual survey of manufacturers, among other data sources. The census is, of course, the most recognizable of those data programs. The, de the census occurs every 10 years and is the traditional population count that most of us are familiar with, and in fact, required by law to participate in. The most recent census occurred in 2010, and results were made available throughout most of 2012. New census items in 2010 included single year of age by sex, more detail on children and householder race and Hispanic origin, as well as household relationships, and in the wake of the housing crisis, information on the mortgage status of owned housing units. Some of you may remember the long form of the census that about one-sixth of the population received. The long form asked additional information, such as, did an individual in the household work over the past year? And if so, how did he or she get to work? And in what industry did he or she work? The long form of the census was retired and has been replaced by the American Community Survey, which asked for additional information on household and familiar relationships, educational enrollment and attainment, occupation and industry of workers, income levels and sources, ancestry and language spoken, and housing characteristics. So when is the data available? Well, the census occurs every 10 years, and of course there's always a lag before the data is available online. As I mentioned, much of the data became available from the 2010 census in 2012. And there's also the issue that information taken 10 years ago may be outdated before the next census is taken. A lot of change can happen in a community over 10 years. The ACS occurs annually. A portion of the population is surveyed each year. In large metropolitan areas, the one-year sample usually provides reliable results, which are reported on FactFinder. For less populated geographies, Survey data from three or five years must be combined to produce reliable estimates. For rural areas and most counties in the U.S., only five-year estimates are available. All right, where is this data? Let's get to the fun part. The data is available at factfinder2.census.gov. You'll recall that earlier I mentioned that in January of 2013, FactFinder 2 was revised. Um, the previous version of FactFinder was the Legacy FactFinder, and it was retired in the fall of 2011. And the name FactFinder 2 has stuck with the new version, although that is the standard version. So you can reach FactFinder using the address on the screen. But I usually get there just using a search engine, such as Google. I simply Google the term American FactFinder, and it pops up um, as the first search result. For those of you who are familiar with the first version of American Fact Finder 2, you'll note that this version is much simplified in terms of the main page. The previous main page included a lot of information and required you to make a lot of choices. All of those choices are still available, but now they're under the advanced search option, and more streamlined choices are available from the main page. Many times we just want to know something about a community. Maybe we're moving there, maybe we're writing a report and just need a few facts or figures. The community facts option is a great way to get that information. We just enter the information of the, the region that we're looking for. Let's here choose Brazos County, Texas, home to Texas A&M University. And we see that Brazos County has a population oops, of almost 195,000 people according to the 2010 demographic profile. Beneath that figure is listed um, about 10 popular tables for the geography. We can also look for information on business and industry, 
seeing that there are almost 14,000 companies in the county, or for information on education, housing, income, or other topics. We can see that in Brazos County, about 85% of the population has at least a high school diploma. Let's really quickly see how that compares to the city of College Station itself. Again, we start typing and American Factfinder suggests locations we might be interested in. And we've pulled up College Station City. Choosing education, we can see that in the city, 93% of the population has at least a high school diploma. Going back to the main page, we see that we could also look for information by zip code. Let's look at one of the small communities in Brazos County, say Curtin. I'll type in the Curtin zip code, which is 77862, and hit go. Unfortunately, not all communities are large enough to have information in community facts, but we can reach that information through advanced search. It's still there, it's just not as easy. Let's go ahead and go back to the main page one more time to walk through a guided search. Most of the information you'll be looking for, this may be the easiest way to reach it. In step one, we can look for information about people, housing, businesses or industries, or we look for information from a specific data set. We may be interested in the redistricting data or only in population estimates or census data, not information from the ACS. In some cases, we may want to search for a table number or a table title. This option is particularly useful if you've used information before and you happen to still have on hand that table number, and you can quickly reference back to the same table. Let's go ahead and look for information about people and click Next. Now, we choose from various topics underneath the people heading, and I'm going to go ahead and say, let's take a look at age. Age now shows up as one of our selections, and I could choose other types of information as well, but I'm just going to click Next. Now, I can enter the location, once again, Brazos County, Texas, College Station, or even a zip code. Or, I can go ahead and choose multiple locations using County, selecting my state, and then selecting the county within it. I just begin typing the name of the county and it will come up and I add it to my selections. But I don't want to add just Brazos County this time. Let's compare Brazos County to neighboring Robertson County. So I just go back to the county's box and start typing in Robertson. I add that to my selections. And then I click Next. I now have the opportunity to ask for information about specific race or ethnic groups. I can either click Next or I can skip this step. Either way will take me to the search results in Part 5. Here I can look up a table. In this case, the S0101 table is the one that I'm looking for. It provides information for the total population as well as males and females for both Brazos County and Robertson County by age category in five-year increments. Going back to those search results, we can see that we've got the top 10 search results provided for us, but if we don't find exactly the information that we're looking for, we can go ahead and go to an advanced search as well. The program tells us that we're leaving guided search, and if we want to return into guided search, we'll have to begin at step one, saying that we want information about population, and then information about age, and the geography, and so forth. And that's okay. We're most likely going to find the information that we want in advanced search and be ready to start a new search anyway. And it really didn't take that long to fill in the information to begin with. By clicking continue, I'm pulled into the advanced search page. All of the selections that we had named when we were going through the guided search are still in the selections box. And now all of the 945 tables and other products that match these selections are provided for us and we can scroll through all of that information. Here's the S0101 table that we just looked at. Let's go ahead and go back to the main page and look at the advanced search options. Again, for those of you who are previously familiar with FactFinder 2, this probably looks familiar. We still have all the information that we were looking at before, but we can clear all of those selections and start a new search. 
This time, let's go ahead and look into business and industry. I'm interested in finding information about establishments. So I check establishments and firms, and then I look at firms with pay, or establishments rather, with payroll, which are going to be employer firms. That's now in the selections box, and I can close my selected topics and choose geographies. I'm going to go ahead and choose Brazos County one more time, typing in Texas and typing in Brazos County. Those appear in the selections box. I close the geographies window. And one of the top picks here is the 2010 county business patterns. I'm going to open that quickly. And we see that we have information on all of the different industries within Brazos County, the number of establishments, paid employees, and payroll. So I notice that for agriculture, we have five establishments. Well, perhaps we are interested in comparing multiple counties, but we're really only interested um, in agriculture. We can go ahead and we can add an industry sector, and we can say we're only interested in agriculture. That's now going to be loaded into our selections. We close this box, and then let's go ahead and add another county. We've already got Brazos County listed, but let's go ahead and add another neighboring county, this time Burleson rather than Robertson. That selection has now been added, and we see that when we click on the same um, table as we had before for 2010 CVP, oh, it says that not all of the rows are displayed. However, we do see we have Brazos County and Burleson County, both sector 11 agriculture, and we have the number of um, establishments and the number of um, establishments for Burleson County. And we see that the number of establishments in Brazos County is the same as we saw in the previous table. However, right now we have disclosure issues that are occurring in um, the other categories, which of course happens when we have a relatively small or, or less dense area and the government's protecting the information of, of individual proprietors or firms. Okay, let's go back one time back to the main page and just take one quick look at the download options. These download options talk about ways that we can download data from American Fact Finder. And those ways are also available when we're in advanced search and we click any of these um, tables that we were looking at before. We can go to download, we can choose between a PDF, Excel, or rich text and download that quickly to our computers and be able to work on that offline. The file is complete. We can go ahead and download it, open it, and just begin working. If you have any questions about this web video or the content in it, feel free to contact me at the telephone number or email address listed on the screen. Additional data resources are available at ruralcommunities.tamu.edu Timely information about data resources and community development topics and events is posted at ruralcommunities.tumblr.com.